We've got less than a week before leaving for Computex, which is in another continent. So with that time, we're gonna tear down the EVGA Hybrid SC2. They just sent this to us. Up front, I'm gonna tell you, we probably won't have time to fully review this before the show, but we can at least take it apart. On the outside, there are some changes visually to the shroud, a few other places. We're gonna see if there are any changes internally to the cooling solution. This is obviously a liquid gold card, as you can see there. So this does follow their hybrid line. Uh, small changes to the fan looks, but otherwise it seems like the same fan. What interests me is when I look down the side here, I can see into the housing and the shell, and I can see a copper plate that looks like it's on the VRAM. So we're gonna see what that does. Before getting to that, this content is brought to you by iFixit.com. You can go to iFixit.com slash GamersNexus to see our link, and you can use code GamersNexus for $5 off at purchase. Today we're gonna to try and use the PC Essentials kit for everything. This is a $20 kit rather than the $60 to $70 ProTech toolkit we normally use. I think this has everything we need, but I'm, I'm actually not sure. So I've got all the other ones just in case. Uh, but what we're gonna do is take this apart. So first off, that means getting rid of this and noting the price. This is an $800 card. This is the most expensive of the 1080 Ti's we've looked at thus far with the others being the Asus Strix at 780 and the FTW3 at 780. And before we take the screws out, I would like to show everyone these things. Are you ready for this? This is the poster. EVGA. Why? Why do you keep doing this? I think I've been reviewing EVGA cards for I don't know, a couple of years now maybe. The amount of these that have gone to the recycling bin could probably create a forest. <laughs> Just either a better poster or stop. Okay. Or uh, six stickers, by the way, for the window of your case. Uh, anyway, let's take this apart. Let's get to the thing that they do well, which is cooling, at least with the ICX series especially. So we're going to start out, looks like, with Phillips. There are... A bunch of the, this is too big. There are a bunch of the smaller Phillips heads uh, with this toolkit that is, I believe, going to be a size 00 or a 0. Yes, 00. zero. So we're going to take these backplate screws out first. These go through the PCB backplate and into uh, the rest of the, into the base plate, in theory. We'll find out. Fortunately, there's no evidence of us going through the tamper seal. Okay, so they're sticking with their thermal pads on everything. This one's on the back side of the MOSFETs and maybe the chokes. That's on the VRAM right there. You can see the grease outline. So that's the half of the back plate off. We can take this half off. Also stuck on by lots and lots of thermal pads. Backside of the GPU, VRAM, VRAM. Pretty straightforward stuff. We've seen all of this before. If you're curious if those thermal pads have any impact, the answer with these cards at least is yes. It, is not always, it doesn't always matter with the back plates. They don't always actually provide cooling but we tested these back when we did the uh, ACX with and without thermal pads testing, where we talked about the ACX problems and uh, EVGA's solution with more thermal pads. You can see the impact they have in our testing in that content if you're curious. Should be able to come off at this point. Let's count the screws first. <laughs> 3, 6, 11, 14, 16, uh, and then four more. So we've got 20 total screws to the back with four holding in the, uh, the front, the actual cooler, the pump, I should say. So it's all loose now, but we're going to try and get rid of this first. This is just the shroud. This is pretty interesting, this is a bit different. So first of all, I need to pull this out. Oh, okay, cool. There's your shroud. If you didn't notice, they've got new like wannabe tessellation stuff on here. 
So it's kind of like the tessellated finish of the FE card, except without the actual indentations. Uh, that's new. Normally it's just gray. I'm not sure if this is new. It, I think it is. I don't have another hybrid in front of me right now. But this is an illuminated plate. So I'm pretty sure that's new. And it's SC2, uh, which means probably, probably RGB. Okay, so here's where I get to explain what this mess is here for. We did that once before, but it's been a while. Let's detach all this first. So first of all, you'll notice this is the extruded plate that, or I should say protruding plate, otherwise people get mad. This is the protruding copper plate that we've been talking about for a while. EVGA uses it in their hybrid kit and in their hybrid cards. The part that's interesting here is this time there's uh, actually TIM on the outer rim of the plate. So why is that there? Because this is clearly the part contacting the GPU, but not this. Well, if you don't follow our coverage or haven't made the connection yourself already, you can see the rim here aligns with the rim on that. The reason there is thermal paste here and so much of it is because this copper plate is contacting VRAM here, VRAM here, VRAM here. So you're contacting VRAM and it's sinking into a plate. That's got to go somewhere. It doesn't, it can't just sit there and this fan's not going to cool it. So what it does is they contact the plate via a lot of TIM, but it's still better than not doing the solution to the pump, the cold plate. And that conducts, they share the same cooling solution. They share the pump. So the GPU and the VRAM share the pump. That means your GPU temperatures will look higher because there are VRAM temperatures or the, the VRAM is being synced to the same module. So that makes the measured temperature go up on the GPU, but the VRAM goes lower. So it's just one of those trade-offs. It's still fine though. You're still ultimately in good shape, really as long as you have even a decent air cooler on one of these. So uh, that's the solution from the outside. Is this already loose? It should be. Okay, cool. Here is the inside. Trying to keep track of all their thermal pads. This is an SC2 PCB. We have already talked about the SC2. Uh, it uses a reference layout with some changes. Not too many though, not in a crazy fashion. And no nothing like the FTW3 certainly, which we've also detailed. So here you can see some aluminum fins. It's pretty standard. Just gives you some extra surface area. This is a uh, normal axial fan. It's not one of the radial blower fans. So that pushes down, blows through the fins, obviously dissipates heat. You've got another stack here. And all this is doing is sinking uh, the FETs, the chokes, which really don't need to be synced, but they are anyway, and memory VRM. Uh, and oh, there's your FETs right there. FETs over here, FETs, uh, all this right there. Chokes, slash inductors if you prefer, and then capacitor banks on the smaller thermal pad right there with the memory VRM stuff at the top. So that's syncing that. It's all controlled there. We will have the ability to measure these temperatures individually. We'll use our own thermal couples as well as EVGA's ICX stuff. Uh, here's just to kind of hide the pumps. It is non-functional other than, it might help with vibration a bit, I'm not sure, but it hides the pumps primarily. That sockets onto this, which is new. <laughs> so they've added that and uh, and when I say new, I should say in relation to the previous hybrid we looked at, which was probably a 1080, that thermal pad's in rough shape. Uh... Oh, wait, I removed the tool, Ron. We got to read the instructions. Push down to remove tools. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, I fix it. I would not have figured that out. Okay, we, we've saved the thermal pad, maybe. All right, I'll worry about the rest of it later. <laughs> I'll smooth it out later. Um, so here's our plate, copper plate. We've got the mounting points, the contact points via thermal pad, which again sinks to the pump. And that's the end of the story cooling for the VRAM. And uh, the rest of it's just elevated because it doesn't matter. All, all this needs to do is contact the pump cold plate. It doesn't need to touch the PCB. That's irrelevant. So that's the, the plate and the pump. 
Do we have anything else special to talk about here? Uh, LED, power, pump, and fan. Are these merged into one? They normally are. Yes. So these connect to one uh, right there. So these bridge into each other and then socket into the board. So you're controlled by that. Now what I'm not sure is how, how does ICX come into play with these hybrid cards? And we'll find that out for the review uh, because that's potentially interesting. E6932 is for the FET, E6930 for the memory VRM. Uh, so nothing, nothing that we haven't talked about in the past. Memory VRM, we've got E6930s up here, uh, and then the FETs, E6932. So that's the card. Clean it off, I guess, and wrap this up. So the hybrid is a, uh, this is an SC2 which means that they've basically taken their, their other SC2, the air-cooled one, and stuck a liquid cooler on it. So if you watch our air-cooled review, in terms of uh, performance gaming, things like that, which really isn't going to change much between these cards, the TIs, that is, if you watch that review, you'll get an idea for the baseline. We'll look at thermals and things for this one as quickly as possible, hopefully, uh, hopefully before... Computex, but that's kind of pushing it, so we will soon find out. And that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. As always, this is the SC2 Hybrid. Uh, 800 bucks. Maybe wait for our review before purchasing, like always. We found that the 1080 Ti is, generally speaking, for gaming, if you're looking for FPS, they're all basically the same. They're within a couple percent of each other. Maybe uh, Founders Edition notwithstanding, if you're not bypassing the thermal li limit by instituting your own fan curve. So the only place they differ is thermals and noise. That's what we're going to test with this one, but we've already tested pretty heavily the SC2, the Strix, the FTW3, the Gigabyte uh, Aorus Extreme Card, and the MSI Gaming X. And of those, the cooling is, I mean, they're really all fine for cooling once you get to that class of card. But this is still interesting because liquid cooling means you can drive down temperatures or Temperatures are driven down by the liquid, but you can sacrifice some of that advantage in thermals and instead lower your noise by lowering fan RPM, which for these radiator fans, we normally plug them into the motherboard to do that. And then you have the lowest possible noise while still retaining temperatures that are about the same as the others. So to fix temperature or fix the noise output, you end up with better temperatures. So we'll look into all that and more. As always, thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. You can go to patreon.com slash gamers nexus if you would like to help us out directly a big support for us these days store.gamersnexus.net for shirts like these we have the uh, gn logo shirts back in stock in cotton and we've got a couple of the graph logo shirts left and as always you can go use the uh, gamers nexus coupon code from ifixit to grab one of their toolkits this one with the uh the special manual for how to remove that thing that i just inadvertently removed i'll see you all next time